Hello everyone, this is Said from Medonix and I welcome you to my first uh, part of tutorials over uh, Android. Uh, in this series of tutorials we want to uh, make some practical applications on Android platform and we will start with uh, very simple uh, applications and we will gradually go higher in details and we will be more uh, experienced with Android. Okay, so the first application I want to show you is the chronometer. I have already made a working version. As you can see, it's a quite simple application. It's just a single screen or single activity. Uh, on the top, you have some uh, a place order for the time. And on the bottom, you have some buttons for the chronometer to start it or uh, to stop it or uh, record the laps. For example, if I start it, it will start like a normal uh, uh, chronometer. While it's running, I can press lap uh, and uh, I can capture the the lap that I uh, the moment that I press the button. Okay, very simple, and I can uh, stop it. And if I start it again, it will be restarted. And the good thing is, uh, if you uh, if you pause the application, I mean by uh, going to another application and coming back, the time will be recorded and uh, you will not lose the time. So uh, let's get started and see well, how we can uh, develop this application from scratch. Okay, as you can see, I have already started Android Studio. I'm going to simply start a new uh, Android Studio project. And I will name the application Chronometer. And the company domain is by uh, a website's name, okay, medonix.com. And project location, it will be on my home directory uh, and uh, inside the work directory. And uh, you're free to save this project anywhere you want. This is just my preference. Okay, we press next. And uh, we want to select the API that we want to work with. Uh, as you can see, the Android Studio tells us if we use uh, Android uh, 4.0.3, uh, we will be compatible with 97.3% uh, of the devices in the world. So uh, let's uh, stick with that. If we go higher, you know, then uh, the compatibility is less. <laughs> for example, for Android 6, 1.3%. So that's not what you want. Okay. And we don't uh, care about the VR TV, Android Auto, and Glass. Uh, we just go ahead by pressing next and make sure that to uh, select the empty activity because if you select a, a blank activity this new kind of activity will come uh, default for you and this has this uh, very pesky uh, circle here <laughs> and uh, we don't need it in this project so let's just go with the uh, empty activity okay and we want that uh, empty activity to be named main activity because it's uh, our uh, main entry point into the application. So the layout name, we just leave everything default and hit finish. Okay, the Android Studio has been uh, working hard to uh, make this project ready for us. And this is the uh, first screen you will see after uh, starting the project. So let's have a quick overview over the project structure. We have the app folder, which is our application. We have the manifest file. We will explain it later. We have the uh, Java folder, which will contain our test or our uh, sources. We will not use the Android test at this in this project, but uh, maybe in later projects we will uh, have a look into it. And the uh, first uh, real source file that we have is the main activity.java and here is the place that we can uh, start coding and the other interesting uh, folder is resources uh, I think you are familiar with the resources in Android so you have the values and uh, layouts and some uh, drawable for images and maybe sounds and stuff but what we are interested in now is the layout uh, folder and our uh, default uh, activity uh, has this uh, name given to it uh, activity underscore main so the first thing we want to do is to uh, create the uh, look for the application kind of li uh, like what we have here 
uh, for the uh, ready version of the application. So we will start uh, producing the same thing. So first of all, I'm going to uh, get rid of this uh, hello world. <laughs> we don't need it. And uh, let's go to the text mode. And what we want to do is to change this relative layout to a linear layout. Okay. Linear layout. Okay. And uh, the thing that we need are uh, layout uh, layout type. Uh, orientation, sorry, orientation should be vertical. So everything we put in this uh, linear layout will be vertically aligned to the for the uh, view. Okay, let's go back to the design mode. No, no. Before that, we need to remove these paddings because we want to use the entire area of the uh, user interface. So I'm going to simply remove these paddings. And I will keep the uh, width and the height of the uh, linear layout to match the parent. So they, uh, again, uh, occupy the entire uh, screen. Okay, let's go back to the uh, design mode. Now we have our root element ready. We want to add uh, some more linear layouts for it. Uh, of type vertical again. The first one for the uh, text holder for the, the chronometer. The second one for the uh, uh, lap uh, text, and the last one for the buttons. Okay. And as you can see at the moment, the the first element uh, occupies the entire uh, of its parent, which will be this uh, linear root linear layout. So we want to begin with uh, at least uh, these three to occupy at least one third of the screen size. So I will select all, all of them and I will uh, set the weight, uh, uh, weight uh, <laughs> property to 1. So each of them will be uh, one third of its parent. Okay. And uh, that's good to begin with. And let's add the text view so we can uh, show the time. Just uh, dragging a text view here. Uh, and I will uh, I will set the default uh, text value to uh, to uh, something that represents represents time zero. For example, zero zero for the hours. Then double dot uh, for the minutes and for the seconds. And three zeros for the millisecond part of our time. Okay. And let's make it a bit bigger, for example, by uh, changing the text size uh, property to like, uh, I don't know, 30 dp, 30 device pixel, or maybe it's a bit small, so let's make it 40 dp. It's also small, make it 50 dp. Uh, that's good enough. And uh, let's change the color to something like... Uh, Phosphorus green. Of course, you can uh, set the colors anything you want, but this is just my own preference. And for it to look good, we want to uh, make the background color of this uh, linear layout, which contains the text view, to black. So I'm going to change the uh, uh, color of this one. Mm, if I can find it, background, okay, background. Let's make it black. Okay, that looks good. And mm, that's it for the uh, for the time view. And oh, uh, we forgot one thing. We have to rename the text view, the ID, so we can access it later in the code. And let's make it like this is my own convention. You can uh, name them any anyhow you want. I will say TV is standing for text view underscore time. Okay. So later in the code, we can access it with this uh, name. Uh, okay. 
So now uh, let's add some buttons. We will uh, take care of the uh, lab view, uh, the text for the labs later. Let's just start it so uh, I can show you that it works fine. Now I will add a button here. Uh, no, 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 I have to do something else because we want the buttons, as you can see, uh, in single row. So we have to change the uh, this linear layout to um, horizontal. So I'm going to the text view. And uh, the last one, we want to change the um, orientation to um, horizontal. You can also do it, do it from the uh, design view, but uh, I find it easier to do it there. Okay, we add uh, three buttons. Okay, first one. Uh, second one. Oh, I missed it. Okay, second button. I'm just dragging and dropping them. Okay. Oh, I, I have to put them inside this linear layout. Okay, that one, then this one, and finally the last one. Okay, so again, I want them to have the same space. So, uh, first of all, I will make them to um, the width to be match parent, and also the height should be match parent. And I will give them the weight of one. Okay, that's more like it. We are still uh, far away from the ideal scenario, but we will fix it over time, so no worries. And I will name the first button uh, with my own convention, btn underscore start. And the second one, btn underscore lab. And also the last one, btn underscore stop. And now let's change the text uh, property. This one should be a start. This one should be lap to record the current time. And this one obviously should be a stop. Okay, now we have the bare minimum, so we can uh, go into the code and uh, start writing some code and uh, we will come back and gradually uh, clean up our uh, user interface so let's go back to the code i'm going to the main activity that java and here we have to declare our um, reference to our uh, user interface elements at the moment we have uh, four of them if you remember we had a text view uh, private text view uh, and I will name it M uh, TV time and I'm going to simply press alt and enter so the uh, text view package will be imported for us automatically uh, here and we had three buttons button uh, I will uh, name the first one mbtn start the second one private button mbtn lap and the last one private button mbtn um, stop and again alt and enter so that the button will be imported for us and in the uncreate uh, method we can uh, get a reference to the actual uh, ui elements uh, by using uh, find view by id function or method so i say mtv time equals find view by id then r for the resources dot id then the name we gave tv underscore time so you can see why the naming convention is important because i can easily distinguish between uh, uh, text uh, text views buttons and other uh, UI elements so we have to cast this to uh, text view again alt and enter and I will do the same thing for the buttons 
Okay, I have done uh, the same thing for the buttons. Now we have to kind of uh, make a event handler. So whenever the user presses the uh, start button, for example, something good would happen. And how we do this is simply by setting the uh, on, uh, click event, for example, and button start that set on click listener, set on click listener. And uh, here we're gonna use an uh, anonymous method. I will just simply say new and uh, select the unclick un listener and press enter. And uh, hopefully under the studio will create it for us, okay. Now, uh, if we reach here, it means that the button has been pressed. Has been pressed. Okay. Now, uh, what would happen when the button starts? Uh, button start is clicked. Uh, at the moment, <laughs> nothing, of course. But we can simply check that by uh, setting the uh, changing the text of the TV time. MTV time that set text, for example, just button start. Just like that. Okay, guys, say goodbye to the uh, chronometer application here because we are going to uh, uh, remove it from our uh, uh, virtual device and uh, replace it with our current version. So this is what we want to uh, achieve for the last time. So say goodbye to it because I'm going to uh, uninstall it from my uh, Android virtual device. Okay, I have removed the uh, uh, working version of the chronometer. I'm going back to the Android Studio. I noticed that I have accidentally removed this uh, opening uh, call erasers. And now all code should be uh, in a working state. So let's uh, try it. We want to deploy it on our uh, emulator. Okay, and let's see what will happen. And this is the result of our work so far. We have the placeholder for the time. We have the placeholder for the uh, labs that we haven't done anything yet. And we have the buttons when we have only the uh, event handler for the uh, start button. So if you press start, okay, it means that the handler works. And we're gonna go back to the code and uh, make it a bit more uh, sophisticated. Okay, I'm going to remove this. And uh, let's get more uh, screen area. Uh, let's go to the project structure because we have to add a new class. Okay. I'm going to the Java folder, to the source folder, and I will add a new class. And I will name it uh, chronometer. Chronometer. Okay. And we want to have a thread. So we want to uh, uh, implement from uh, runnable. And I will hit Alt and Enter. So the uh, interface method will be implemented for us. I mean the the placeholder. Okay. So inside this class, we can uh, keep track of time and update the uh, user interface with the time that has passed since the uh, start of the chronometer. So uh, we kind of need some uh, methods and some uh, uh, constructors. The first thing that we, we want to have uh, is a kind of a way to access our main activity. And if you are familiar with Android, you can you know that the activities are uh, based on context. So I will have a context property, and I will name it uh, M uh, main activity, or just just name it M context. Okay. 
then uh, we need something to keep track of the starting time so uh, let's make it and the time is in Android is uh, it can be presented by a, a long variable type so I will just say uh, m uh, start time okay that's good enough for now and uh, yeah that I think that for now it's uh, enough so let's add a, a constructor I will press press alt and insert so it will generate for us a constructor and the only parameter I am interested in at the moment is the, is the context okay now we have our context and uh, we also need a method so we can call it from the uh, main activity let's call it uh, public public um, void because it doesn't return anything um, the start um, the start okay okay um, we also need a method to stop the chronometer call it a public void stop because it also doesn't return anything and for sake of uh, being a good developer <laughs> I will introduce the boolean type public boolean m uh, is running so it will indicate or if uh, whether or not our uh, chronometer is running or not so in the start I will say m is running equals true and here I say m running m is running equals false okay the moment that the uh, chronometer just started we have to capture the current uh, time of the system so it will be the base for our uh, chronometer time and how you do it is simply uh, by, by saying uh, m start time equals system that uh, current time millis yes it will return the current uh, time of the system or android uh, phone or tablet or whatever uh, the time in milliseconds and now we have to uh, convert this time uh, into a uh, representable uh, kind of time which uh, is uh, is built over uh, milliseconds seconds minutes and uh, hours so that's a quite simple uh, mathematic formula uh, I can show it to know, uh, show it to you now uh, let me uh, uh, define some static uh, constants and uh, how you declare uh, constants in Java is by using the final uh, keyword uh, you know in C and C++ in C++ we have a static and in, uh, in C we have a static and in uh, C sharp we have uh, const and also in C++ we have const but in Java the counterpart is final okay should be of type long and I will gonna name it uh, millis underscore two minutes so uh, this is simply uh, telling us how many uh, uh, milliseconds are uh, within a minute so you know that each second is thousand uh, milliseconds and each second is uh, 60 each minute is 60 seconds so it would be simply uh, 60 times 1000 would be 60,000 okay and we do the same thing for the hours final long hours no sorry uh, millis to hours okay it will be 3 million and 600 uh, milliseconds in each hour okay okay this is the run method and uh, here we can um, 
check if the chronometer has started. So we can simply say uh, while is running is true. Do the following things for us. So first of all, we want to know uh, how many milliseconds have passed since we have started. So we say along uh, since equals again we get the system current time in millisecond then we uh, subtract it from the time that we have actually started so it will be this one uh, minus start time now we can say the seconds inside this equals uh, since divided by 1000 because we know in uh, each second there are 1000 milliseconds and we get a reminder uh, by 60 I have to be careful of the uh, operator uh, precedence mm -hmm. and we have to, ca to uh, cast this to int because by default it will be a long divided by anything which will be long, so we cast it to int. We do the same thing for the minutes. Int minutes equals uh, since divided by the constant we have uh, declared. Why we have declared this as constant? Because we do not want to uh, the CPU of the Android uh, device to calculate this. Uh, uh, these multiplications for us because it will waste a lot of uh, CPU cycles so having them as a constant is a great uh, chance to improve uh, performance so we want to uh, get the minutes out of milliseconds and uh, I have to be careful over this operator uh, precedences again uh, the reminder by 60 and yes and we this time we convert it to int by yourself now we have seconds minutes and let's get the hours int hours equals int we already casted it so um, i open two uh, two bracers okay since divided by um, millis to hours then we want a remainder by 24 okay that's also done uh, now we have the <laughs> correct division of time we have to somehow let the main activity know uh, to update the text view so how we do that is going to back to the main activity and I will uh, create a new method here public void uh, I will name this method update time text timer text and the argument will be of course of type of a string string time and it is really important that we uh, because uh, we will uh, get the call to this method from a uh, chronometer class and it will be on its own thread so we want to make sure that the uh, updating time updating the uh, text view will happen on the main uh, UI thread so I will simply call uh, run on UI thread and new runnable okay and inside it I will just simply say MTV time that's a text equals time the argument that we have passed and you notice that the, there's a problem with this because we are inside the anonymous method we have to declare this uh, argument as final so that will take care of the problem hopefully yes it did and we can go back to the uh, chronometer uh, class and we can simply uh, get the reference that we already had 
from the main activity, you re remember that we uh, saved it in the context, M context. And we have to cast this const context to main activity. Main activity. Okay. Now we can simply uh, uh, reach the update timer text that we have just defined in the main activity. Okay, now we have to do a string format. Uh, and the format will be, of course, uh, uh, percent zero 02. We need uh, two zeros. Then again, percent zero 02 again for the minutes, percent zero 02 for the seconds. And of course, you have guessed by now 0 0.3 for the milliseconds. And all of them should be of type D for integer. D, 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 and D. And we just simply pass the uh, uh, the time that we have calculated. Oh, uh, I think I have forgot something. We have to also uh, get the uh, milliseconds in itself. Milli is equals, uh, let's say, int, cast to int since divided by a thousand uh, no reminder by thousand okay so we can simply say uh, hours minutes uh, seconds and finally millis okay that should do it so let's go back to the uh, main activity and now we have to do somehow uh, run or uh, uh, instantiate or chronometer class and I will show you uh, how to do that so inside main activity uh, let me uh, close this uh, we want a, a variable for the chronometer class okay I say private chronometer and chronometer okay and we also need a thread, private thread and thread chrono. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's let's go to the uh, unclick listener for the, uh, the start button. So here we can say um, uh, m chrono equals new uh, chronometer, and you remember we have to pass the first argument. It should be of type of main activity. So just simply say uh, this. But again, we have the problem because we are inside the anonymous uh, method or class. We have to get this uh, this that refers to the main activity somewhere else. Again, I will put here private context and context. And inside the onCreate, I will uh, get a reference to the uh, main activity. Okay, now we can simply just pass in M context. Okay. And uh, let's check if the uh, chronometer was not instantiated before. Okay, if it's not null, it means that it's already been started because we don't want to uh, create multiple of the chronometer instance. We have to really check if it, if it was already started or not. If it was uh, if it was null, if it was not null, sorry, we will stop it by calling the stop method. Then we uh, we just stop it, but uh, later we have to take care of the thread that we uh, we have uh, created. Uh, I will show you later. And 
Mm, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, because uh, when the we want to only uh, start the chronometer if the chronometer uh, object here is is no. Okay. Say I say m chronometer equals new uh, chronometer. I will pass the context. We have to uh, bring this inside this uh, if statement. And simply uh, we create a new thread uh, by saying um, mthread chrono equals new uh, thread. And we pass this M chrono because the thread ex expects us uh, something that uh, uh, that has been uh, implemented the uh, runnable uh, interface. And after that, we can say the thread can start. And when the thread has started, we can uh, start the chronometer itself. Okay, this this should uh, partially work, so let's uh, try it by running the application. I'm going to uh, put it in the uh, virtual device and wait for the uh, build and see if we get any errors or uh, or not. Okay, it has not been uh, updated yet since our last time. Let's see if we had any errors. No. Okay. Now, let's uh, click on the start button and hope for the best. Well, uh, it works. <laughs> okay. And obviously, the lab button doesn't do anything, and also the stop button doesn't do anything. So, the next step will be uh, somehow to uh, implement the uh, functionality of these two buttons. And you notice because we, that if a statement that we put in the code, it doesn't uh, uh, let us to restart it by just simply uh, pressing on the start button. So let's uh, improve the application even more. Okay, the next thing we do is to uh, implement the uh, stop functionality. So I say uh, same thing for the uh, start button, but this time for a stop. I will set the unclick listener. Then again, new uh, unclick listener. And here we check if the uh, chronometer was already instantiated by checking it if it's not null. Now we can be sure that the chronometer was uh, at some point in time was started, so had been started. So let's say. Uh, it's a stop called a stop function, which, if you remember, will uh, set the uh, is running to false. And if the is running is false, this while loop will not operate anymore. That's the simple logic behind the application. And then we just clean up our uh, thread. And how you do it is simply you call the uh, interrupt method, and then you set it to to null. This is just a safe kind of way of stopping a thread in Java, at least in the Android API, as far as I know. And after all, we set mchronometer equals to null again. Because the next time that the start button has been clicked, it will be null, so the chronometer will be started again. Okay, that should do it for the stop. We are not going to check it because it obviously will work. So let's go back to the uh, main activity, uh, the uh, layout. And we have this kind of uh, stupid uh, error message. I think we have to uh, sync the project to get rid of this error message, hopefully. Or just simply let's close it and uh, open it again. 
uh, resources layout and activity main I have no idea why we have this error message but let's try uh, clear the cache okay that works fine <laughs> and uh, so uh, first of all this uh, linear load is a bit too big for us so I will uh, put the weight I will change the weight scale for all of them to something uh, some uh, bigger number that we can easily work on because the weight uh, only accepts integers so I will say 6 so they still have the same ratio of uh, filling the root layout but this one I will make it uh, 8 okay so this one is 8 this one is 6 and this one is 6 and let's also make the last one also 8 because we want the most area for the labs this one again let's increase the weight okay now this one <laughs> decrease the weight so it's just just a game of uh, guessing okay and this time this one 12 okay I think by now it's uh, better than nothing and uh, let's do the same thing with the uh, second linear layout and we want the background to be black again okay and uh, let's put a large text view and we want to uh, fill the entire area okay uh, but the problem with this will be that uh, if we go outside this area we have to somehow scroll down uh, to the bottom so uh, we have to take care of that also and that simply uh, can be done by uh, wrapping the text view inside the, the scroll view so I'm going to the uh, text mode I declare a, a scroll view and I will uh, put the uh, width to be a matching parent and we have to make sure that uh, we put the closing uh, tag of the, the scroll view after the text view so this way we can know that the text view has been uh, wrapped inside the scroll view and we need a ID for our, uh, the scroll view at plus ID, I will say SV for a scroll view under uh, uh, laps. Okay. And uh, we make the height also match parent. And for the edit text, uh, I'm really sorry. We had to do this on the second one. On this one okay and let's uh, also copy the closing tag and uh, okay because the first one was our uh, timer and we don't need the uh, scroll view for that so and let's uh, change this to uh, edit text because it's easier to work with and uh, let's give it a name I mean an ID it already has an ID so uh, I will repress the uh, ID with uh, et for edit text underscore uh, laps okay and we have to make sure that we close it okay and let's format the code 
Okay. And the default text, we want it to be clean. We don't want to see anything unless the user has pressed on the uh, on the lap button. So that should do it for the text view from the user interface point of view. And let's go back to the main activity and uh, again declare a click listener for uh, MBTN lab that we already defined. Set on click listener, new a click listener, okay. And uh, now we need a reference to the uh, edit text that we already defined. So let's say private edit text. M E T laps, and we obviously need to um, get a reference in it for it. M E T laps equals find you by the R dot I D dot E T laps, and I've pressed Alt and Enter for the casting to the edit text. Now we can access it freely, and. Okay, uh, when the user presses on the uh, lap button, we just simply want a copy of the current time to be placed uh, into the edit text. And we can simply say uh, met labs dot append text and just some sort of uh, text format lap space plus. Then we get the value of the uh, uh, um, um, TV time. Okay. And at the end, we just uh, print a new line. But uh, we have a problem here. We, ha we have to take care of the uh, number of the labs button that we have pressed so uh, I'm going up there again I say private int m labs equals one because we want to start counting from one and whenever we start it start the chronometer uh, here we have to do some extra steps we reset the uh, lab counter to one, and we clean the uh, we clear the old text inside the uh, uh, labs text view. Okay, and. We can now add uh, a string that value of m labs, so we get the numbers plus one extra space and plus the current value of the TV time. Okay, then we have to uh, make sure to uh, scroll uh, to the DOM. So uh, again, we need to reference to the scroller, a uh, scroll view. Okay, private uh, scroll view. M S V uh, labs. Same story. We have to get the reference. M S V labs equals find view by ID r.id.svlabs uh, again alt and enter for the cast and here we uh, scroll down uh, uh, what did I name it uh, msvlabs okay mm -hmm. But uh, because we want to uh, not be on the uh, on the other threads, 
So we say uh, mm, okay, we have a problem here. Okay, let's see what is the problem. Okay, we have defined the scroll view MSV Labs. And we have also got the uh, reference. And I guess we have to declare it as uh, final. Well, yes, obviously we have to put it inside the onclick function of the uh, bottom lab. So we say uh, msvlabs.post new runnable and msvlabs.smooth scroll to uh, point x equal zero and the bottom of the uh, text view, edit text, sorry. Okay, that should do it. And I think it's better for us to set uh, if chronometer was not running, so uh, there's no point of doing a, capturing a lap, so I say just simply say uh, return. do nothing <laughs> okay okay let's try the application one more time let's see if we get any errors okay Let's try it. Okay. We can see some stuff, but I guess we have some errors. If I can. Oh, <laughs> oh what a fun error. Okay. Let's kill the emulator first of all we need to uh, change the color of the text view I mean the edit text to something visible the background should be black okay but the uh, color should be something uh, obvious let's try uh, I don't know blue and uh, while we are here let's do somehow that we uh, cannot edit it so I will uh, search for the edit table enabled okay uh, edit table is already false okay I think we have to do it through the code um, here we can say uh, met labs dot is edit is enabled I think that's a read-only method. Is the table? Uh, I have to look it up again. Okay, I think it should be metlabs dot set enabled. False. By setting this, then the user cannot edit the text inside the lab view. And let's check the text. 
and uh, the problem was the uh, here <laughs> what you had to do was to get the text uh, get the text of the text view time but we were doing uh, wrong and we were getting the uh, object and obviously what we have seen was the uh, uh, to a string method of the text view but it should work now so let's try it again and make sure that you put the get text uh, method of the MTV time otherwise it doesn't work <laughs> and you will get a uh, crap text so let's see mm -hmm. okay that looks better let's start it and let's again hope that the lab works okay okay I can uh, guess you know what's the error because we didn't uh, uh, increment the lab counter and it's really simple to do uh, whenever we append something to the ET labs we just increment the M labs by one Okay, let's try it again. Okay, this time I believe the lab should work fine and uh, we can see that the lab counter is incrementing. And let's see if the scroll here works. Yes, we're getting the scroll to the bottom and we can easily uh, we scroll to the top and uh, bottom of the uh, uh, edit text okay and uh, let's uh, stop let's uh, start again and the counter should start from one again yes it does yeah so uh, that's basically uh, what you had to do to uh, create this uh, chronometer there are some extra features that uh, I think because of lack of time and uh, we cannot uh, discuss it anymore but if you are interested to see how you can uh, implement uh, a, met a way that you can uh, save the value of the count uh, time counter, you can easily go to my uh, GitHub. Uh, it is github.com slash embedonics and you can find the repository for this code, Android Chronometer. And you can simply uh, check the source code. I have everything here so for example if you go to the main activity you will see that I have uh, already commented everything so you can uh, very easy follow the code and uh, the only thing that I have added here is that uh, I have overrided the uh, unsaved instance and on pause so uh, whenever the application is goes to the background then the value of the timer is saved and uh, when it comes back the value will continue from the last state that it was in so you can simply see it here uh, I have overrided uh, the uh, unsaved instance so here we can easily follow this code and if you had any problems you can ask me I hope you have learned something from this uh, tutorial and in the next one we will do something more sophisticated and uh, that's all Thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.